Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. So, it is said that Constantine legalized Christianity in the Roman Empire, which he did in 313 AD, which I believe they now say BCE or CE. So that would have been um, 313 AD or 313 CE. He, however, died in 337 CE and Christianity did not become the official religion of the Roman Empire until 380 CE. Now, what's interesting is around the time of his death, a little bit prior to his death, Christianity became the official religion of the Ethiopian Empire. And I believe it's a King Nagus. I could be incorrect about that. But it became in around 330 CE the official religion of, e of Ethiopia before it was the official religion of Europe or the Roman Empire. In 313, he just, Constantine decriminalized Christianity, but it did not become the official religion until after it was already the official religion in Ethiopia. Mind you, the church in, the Coptic church, the Coptic Christian church in, Ethi in Egypt was in existence back since about 60 AD, which I believe was around the time that Paul was preaching, um, and even perhaps Peter and the other disciples, I think it was John the Revelator who died, or it is believed by scholars, the book of Revelation was written around 90 CE, if I'm not mistaken. So you're talking about Christianity being in Africa pretty much <laughs> from the very beginning. But when we speak about official religions of empires, it was the official religion in Ethiopia in 330 AD, I believe it was, um, which was prior to the death of Constantine in 337 AD. So that means that when it became the official religion of the Roman Empire, it, Constantine was already dead. And there were other, I guess, um, popes who were running things. And so the Catholic Church became the official sort of church of the empire. And they were in a bit of a brotherhood with the Eastern Orthodox Church until about 1054 CE when there was an East-West schism. Of course, one of the main issues was the validity of the Pope being the vicar of Christ or the replacement for Christ in the earth realm, which we know is idolatrous and satanic. The Queen of Heaven, for example, is just a repackaging of many pagan goddesses. And so we see so many things such as the Carnival Queens in places like the Philippines where they celebrate and, and, and just sort of venerate the so-called Queen of Heaven, Mary, the alleged mother of God, which again is blasphemous. Okay, Mary was a human woman who was chosen by God to give birth to Jesus Christ. This is why when Jesus was preaching, hallelujah, and she began to knock on the door and the disciples were like, oh, you know your mother and your brothers. My mother and my brothers are them that do the will of God. He was doing the will of God. And so here he is at 30 something years old having to once again let his mama know because we honor our mother and father. But at 12 years old, he said, you should have known I was about my father's business. And so now here we are again. And here you come knocking on the door. Hallelujah. And Christ Jesus is like, I'm not going to stop preaching because my mother is knocking at the door. She should have been here on time to hear the word of God because I am once again about my father's business. And so he said, those who do the will of my father are my mother and brother. And nowhere does the scripture say that he stopped to let them in. Hallelujah. And so she was just a human being. And I believe there's a scripture, and I can't recall it to mind at this moment, where, you know, they were sort of just sort of, oh, bless the breast that gave you suck, or something like that. In other words, the mother who birthed you, oh, blessed her. And I want to say that once again, it was no bless the people who obey my father, something along those lines, those who are Bible scholars or those who just take a little time to read your Bible. You let me know right here in the comments, if you can, where um, that scripture is and what it says specifically, because you should know it. Amen. If you don't look it up, Google it. I might do that later on. Um, and so she's just a human being. But yet we continue to venerate and continue to worship her as if she is a God. This is blasphemous. You know, and there's a lot of that going on, a lot of this manifesting and this idea that you can manifest things by the power of thought and the power of your will. And somehow people are not aware that that is literal 
witchcraft because you do not have the authority. I have the power to go walk into my mother's house right now and do whatever it is I want. I have the ability to get on the train and go out there to where she is. She may have changed her locks, <laughs> ignoring my mother. She may have changed her locks <laughs> and she may have even changed the code to her garage <laughs> or else I could get in there whenever I want. <laughs> Hallelujah. But see, my mother is very smart. And so I have the power to do that. I do not have the authority to take it upon myself to do that. I do not have the authority to take it upon myself to go right now into my aunt's car and to just take her keys out of her pocket and just go into her car and listen to the radio. But see, these are the type of things that people do regularly that they, th that they think is okay. You think that it is okay to just do whatever it is you have the ability to do because you do not understand honor, you do not understand respect, and you do not understand authority. Just because you can do something does not mean you have the right to do it. You have not been asked to do it. You have not been told to do it. You do not have permission to do it. And so when you decide that you're going to just manifest what it is that you want to manifest, then you're dealing with witchcraft. And God has the power and the authority to strike you dead right there in the moment and you go to hell. No more grace and no more mercy. So when we discuss church history, we discuss the Catholic Church, the Roman Empire, and they say that um, Peter, Simon Peter, was the first alleged pope. This is not true. It is some who say that the first pope was Simon Magus. Mm, I'm not so sure about that. What we can say is that <laughs> he tried to do some magic and float but it was the, uh, Simon Peter knew that it was just witchcraft and it was demons holding him up in the air. So when he began to float behind the pavilion in some sort of a, it was almost like an Elijah and the prophets of Baal type of a showdown between him and Simon Peter. And um, this is just, again, a little history. You can look these things up online. And so <laughs> the, Simon Peter knew that it was witchcraft and he rebuked those demons. And Simon the sorcerer fell. And his knees and legs snapped off. And so the bones that they found under the Vatican show signs of leg damage and it had no feet. And there was purple cloth. And it was believed to be Simon Peter. Although certain popes were trying to stay, say and some still want to say that it was Simon Peter whose bones was under the Vatican. Although it is known that they had moved Peter and Paul's bones a couple of times and then they somehow allegedly ended up in England. So this was not him buried there. We know that there was pagan sacrifices, pagan rituals and things that went on in that area even before the Vatican was built. And you can talk about the Illuminati families and then the 13 Italian bloodlines of the Illuminati which seem to be the real nucleus of the Illuminati depending on who you ask. Again, this stuff is, you barely can even find this sort of information online these days. You would need historians, you would need experts. You need to buy and read a whole bunch of books. I don't have time. I'm determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so I'm not going all the way into that because the Lord will show me what it is he wants me to see when he wants me to see it. Amen. But you can study to show yourself approved and look and Google and find and buy and search and go to libraries and look up books and find the historians if you would like. I'm just giving you a little piece, a little morsel, a little taste to whet your appetite so that you can go forth and seek. That's the job of a teacher. My job is to teach you just enough that you will be encouraged to go and to learn even the more. Amen. And so it is known that <laughs> those bones were moved. And that was not Simon Peter. And so it's even though that's true, I still don't necessarily think he was, quote unquote, the first pope. Again, we say it wasn't until 1054 that the Western and Eastern sort of branches of the religion, the Eastern Orthodox and the, the Catholic Church sort of broke apart. And it wasn't until 380 AD that it was the official religion of Rome, the Roman Empire, the so-called Catholic Church, decided to become worldwide or universal to spread from Rome where, the, you know, you have the bishops of Rome. And so some believe that it was more so that Simon Magus was the first bishop of Rome. And that very well may be the case, but even if he was not the technically the first bishop of Rome, he was the father and the forerunner of people who decided to use the name of Jesus Christ and to use religion as a way of controlling and manipulating people all while simultaneously practicing witchcraft, sorcery, and paganism. He was the father of that. And so you can say, that from the Catholic Church to the 
church at Rome, he is the person who, even if he was not the official person who was the first bishop or the official person who was the first pope, it certainly was not Simon Peter. Y'all want to put some respect on the apostle's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, but he was definitely, <laughs> he, it was not Simon Peter and it may not have been Simon Magus, Simon the Sorcerer. But it was definitely Simon the Sorcerer who created the, just the idea and of, of just mixing paganism, hallelujah, with Christianity. And it was in his bloodline because some say that he comes from the people who, if you look in, I believe it was the Old Testament, they came to Israel and the lions began to eat them. And they said, you know, it's probably because we are not worshiping the God of this land. And so some scholars will say those people did begin to worship Yahuwah. But they also continue to worship other gods. And so you see this still played out with the people like the Yazidis in Syria, who we say are Christians, but they practice a form of Christianity that is mixed, hallelujah, with witchcraft. So you still see it being going on today in small groups around the world, people like that. You have heretical groups such as um, the Nestorians, which Mohammed's uncle was a Nestorian. Then you have the Talmudic Jews, who also was mixing Babylonian behavior. That's why it's called the Babylonian Talmud. To this day, they still say that you can have sex with a child if they're under three years old. Just And so it's not a sin because a man can't lay with a man. But you're not a man if you're under a certain age. So that makes it okay. And then the Muslims do the same thing. And you can marry someone eight years old. And Afghan people can come to me in restaurants where I grew up and tell me and my best friend that we are wrong because of our behavior. And because everybody knows the kind of lifestyle we live. But yet to tell us that it's okay if we just do it in secret. And you got to walk like a man and act like a man and do it in secret. And it has to be only at a certain age. If you're over 30, then you have to be killed because that's how we do it in my country. But then to go on and to explain to us, oh, the person could be 19 and the other person could be mm, 15, 14. And you continue to drop the number down, down, down until my best friend said stop. Because now we understand clearly that what you're saying is that us being living out loud, as they say, proud of our sin, which is not good to be proud of, to be prideful of sin because it's. A sin. Homosexuality is a sin. But that's beside the point. The point is, you're confirming that your issue is not with what we're doing. Your issue is, is with the way we do it. And that's why it has grown so much. Because people continue to mix Babylonian pagan belief systems with a religious aspect of Christianity that we call Christianity when you're just using Jesus Christ's name as a cover. And so you are okay with abortion. You are okay with gay marriage. You are okay with, 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 with all types of sinful things. You just want it to be done undercover. And so the Democrats are very out loud with it. And then the Republicans are very, well, let's just be hush-hush with it. Because I was in Philadelphia in my little booty shorts, having no idea as I was going out into the streets with me and my other friend, Tall Mike. We was going out, <laughs> To catch some boys. And lo and behold, all these older white men in suits. And I'm saying, what is going on? And unsurprised, the Rock School for Dance Education had put me up in a hotel, which I didn't know was as nice of a hotel as it was. But and the, the Republican National Convention was there. And so all the senators had shown up to register. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, here I am in my booty shorts. Only for them to start laughing. After one of them made a joke about, oh, I guess Senator so-and-so must have checked in already. He got here early. Or some sort of a joke along those lines. And at that point, I'm thinking, oh, okay, I know what the kind of party this is. I don't feel bad. At that point, hear me what I say. At first, I was embarrassed because, ooh, respectable men in business suits. You thought you were sneaking out. Wasn't up. You in Philadelphia. Your family's far away. Nobody's going to know. Now you feel bad, but then I didn't feel so bad. Once I see that you're laughing and you're making a joke and then you're mentioning some other person. So now I already know, oh, this is what y'all be doing. Oh, y'all be tricking. Oh, okay, good, because these are the senators. Huh, what kind of money they got? I might can get me a good job or something playing with one of these senators. I said, okay, drum, come on, leave these white men. So they scared because they scared. They're not going to really step out and be bold, even though this is what they do in secret. So let me just mind my business and go on out here into the streets of Philadelphia like we was about to do anyway. And so when people talk about sex trafficking and things like that, that's just a small taste, just enough to shock you, to help you to understand that, no, baby, we are not all conspiracy theorists. Some of us have experienced things in life that let us know. And that's just one story. I got a lot of stories. I've got several stories, but that's just one little taste. So when people tell me that they've been trafficked by senators and things like that, I'm like, yeah, I can believe it because I saw the look in their eyes. 
and I heard that laughter. I'm saying this is the laughter. This is a nervous laughter. This is the nervous laughter of a group of grown men who are attracted to me. And here I am, 18 years old. And even at 20-something years old, people thought I was a teenager. Even at 40, people thought, oh, I thought she was a political student because you talk so much about politics. I thought she was 20-something years old. No, my picture on Facebook is old, but I was 36, 37, 35, 38 in that picture. So here I am. You don't even know if I'm 18 years old or not. But I see lust and I hear the nervous laughter because you're turned on and you're trying to play it off by laughing it off like it's cute and like it's funny. And this, and I'm looking at the signs of oh, the Republican National Convention. Oh, wow. That's why these people are here. And so when y'all start talking politics, <laughs> don't talk to me about politics. <laughs> and when you think things are conspiracy theories, don't do it because you have not walked you have not walked in my shoes, so you do not know what it is I know from my own eyes and my own ears and the spirit that God gave me. And so this is just yet another example of how even today, whether it's with the Catholic Church venerating Mary or the politicians playing games, it is the same thing that traces back to Babylon, that traces back to the Catholic Church, that traces back. There is nothing new under the sun. So yes, Simon Magus was indeed the father of all of this mixing, but again, we can't even only blame him because like I said, the people he came from are very likely the same people who was mixing Christianity with paganism, who are probably the very same people we see in Syria today that we say are Christians, the Yazidis, although they mix paganism with Christianity, the, the heretics like the Nestorians, Muhammad's uncle, the, the Talmudic Jews. When you talk about Illuminati, you're talking about Talmud Jews. When you talk, you're talking about Ashkenazi Jews who are not from Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz, Noah, Japheth. I'm sorry, Enoch, Japheth Noah, Shem, who was after Shem? I'm sorry, Japheth was after Shem because Enoch is Noah's great grandfather. So you had Noah, and then you had Shem, then you had Japheth, then you had Gomer, and then you had Ashkenaz. That's the bloodline. Going back to Noah, and then again, I believe, I believe it was Lamech who was Noah's father, and then Enoch was the great-grandfather. I'm missing. I, was there another J-Path? There was another one of those names, because even with Canaan in his bloodlines, there was an Enosh, who was a descendant of Canaan. But that's a whole different bloodline. Sometimes it's a little difficult to keep it in order because there were so many people who had the same name, and so you would have, like, Enoch, who came from Seth, but you had Enosh, who came from Cain, who was cursed because he killed Abel. And so it gets a little bit mixed up, but again, you can find all of that in the book of Genesis. For those of you who you, you, who should be reading your Bible, you should, be, you should be able to correct me. You should already, if you should be able to know it off the top of your head, and if you don't, then okay, we both need to go back and study. But the case is that Ashkenaz was the son of Gomer, who was the son of Japheth, who was the son of Noah. And these Jewish people do not come from him. And they also are not from Israel. They are Semitic. And possibly, 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 possibly could be Israelite as well as other tribes of people in Syria and Jordan. And again, I, some of the, the connections with Esau... And Ishmael and the connections with um, with Ishmael and the other sons of Abraham that he had with Keturah. That gets complicated because, again, you would think that they would all be mixing together because they're in the same area. But you had a lot of prejudice and pride and racism and family feuding. And so mm, that's why I guess the scholars just keep it at Syria, Jordan, Israel when they say Semitic. But those people also came from Abraham. Esau married into Ishmael's bloodline. Which was all, which is basically an Egyptian bloodline. You had the Israelites mixing in with the Canaanites and all types of other African people, such as the Egyptians. And so there was a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of mixing. Esau became more so a Caucasian type people again because of mixing. Because you had the Persians come in, you had the Greeks come in. Um, there was a guy who was an Ish. Edomite who took soldiers and I forget his name he but he took soldiers from East Africa and went and like took over parts of Europe um, but of course they do still talking about mixing because he took black men as soldiers lots of them to go and take over so you have lots of lots of mixing but in regards to just for example the Irish the Celtic people they 
were Syrophoenicians. They were Phoenicians. They were Afro-Asiatic. They went into uh, well, the land around about Turkey and mixed with the Turkic people, most likely. But we do know that they mixed with the Scythians and then went into Turkey. And so this is why I say they most likely mixed with the Turkic people. But of course, sometimes again with prejudice, you may have situations where they say, okay, no. But then they went into what we call Ireland. And that's how you get the Celtic people. Now, these Ashkenazi Jewish people. You can. I posted the um, article on, on 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 Facebook, and it's available. Hallelujah! Praise God! We thank God because He's allowing us to know the real truth in these last and evil days. And I thank Him. And so, what they did was, they were they were <laughs> Semitic, but not necessarily Israelite. And then they mixed with the Persians, and then they also mixed with the Scythians, who are the ancestors of some Russian tribes. And so these people who were the Persian, Scythian, mostly European, only 3% Semitic, which includes Syria and Jordan and not only just Israel, that mixture of people went into what was called Khazaria. They are who we used to call the Khazars, and that area is Ukraine and southern Russia. And so you have a lot of mixing as far as bloodlines, and you have a lot of mixture when it comes to religion. And so I just wanted to touch on that today because, again, the beauty pageant people over in the Philippines are having these festivals for, for Mary in the, and they think it's so Christian. And I'm thinking, you are deceived. And it's sickening to me. And so that, 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 that inspired my talk on the Catholics today. And I was studying about Simon Magus, I believe it was last week or earlier in the week. And so, again, he may have not necessarily been the actual first pope or the actual first bishop of Rome, but he was, he used Christianity. He was the first person to, other, again, he may have come from those people who the lions ate in the Old Testament because they wasn't worshiping Yahuwah. But he himself was the one who used Jesus Christ and Christianity and followed the apostles and tried to copy them and battle them and set up a church and set up his own religion and set up his own branch of Christianity and was doing all kinds of just paganist and like his like ideas <laughs> and his teachings was the root of whomever it was that was the bishop of Rome or the first pope. It was the root of what the Catholic Church was. And so I guess that's why God allowed for him to end up being buried in the pagan site of worship, which later became Vatican City. And they tried to say his bones were Simon Peter, although his bones is very much likely in um, England, according to the historians. And so let's just be aware of mixture, because the true Israelites, black people, have gone through everything we went through because we followed and chased other gods and he told us in Deuteronomy, I'm going to send you into slavery in ships. You are going to be called bywords. What's a byword? Coon is a byword. Nigga is a byword. He said your sons will be like bulls in a net at the heads of the street. A street head is the street corner. And when you put a bull in a net, it begins to do what cowboys would call bucking. And so it's called going buck wild. And we even had a song, Buck Wild. About, there might have been a go-go song here in D.C. called Buck Wild. We had a song called Going Buck Wild. And surely in D.C., New York, and all the cities of the United States of America, Atlanta, everywhere, Little Rock, L.A., Chicago, these niggas are going buck wild just like the Bible said. You will be called, not Israelites, you'll be called nigger. You'll be called coon. You'll be called black. And you'll be at the heads of street on the street corner going buck wild like a bull. This is all Bible. Google it. Look it up. It's a Bible. Every single prophecy. There are some prophecies about Israel that can loosely apply to other groups of people. But when you take each and every prophecy, it only applies to us. And again, um, in India, because the thugs, the word thug. A thug, a thug is an Indian word, actually. And they also are called by words. I believe perhaps the Israelites there might be the untouchables, the Dalits. Perhaps I'm not sure exactly who Israel is in India, but they are in India. Again, because of Ahasuerus um, and his queen Esther, who was a Jew and the Jewish people of his kingdom that spread from Persia all the way into India. The queen of Sheba, who made Judaism her religion. And um, I'm sure the Jews were also there in Ethiopia and her kingdom spread from Ethiopia to Southern Arabia into India. And so we're there. And then the, the, the forest, I believed that we were in the forest, like the rainforest. I said, I think those people are Jews, you know, especially when I found out that on the Solomon Islands, 
they sing the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And so I said, hmm, there's some similarities you will see between those two people. So perhaps those are also Jews. And then that was confirmed by Celestial of the Master's Voice. And I cannot seem to find that video or even the, on her blog. I can't seem to find it. And I mean, no one else is talking about it. I asked her about it. She didn't comment. Maybe the Lord says, you know what, because it's going to start getting into pride and getting into racism. And we don't have time because, again... We know that everything that God has done for his people was for him because he wanted to destroy us. But Moses prayed. OK, and many times he wanted to just destroy us. But he said for his name's sake, because we have just me personally, my family, my friends, the associates, my ancestors, the people in my city, my country. We have disrespected God on every level. Help me, Jesus. And so it was only for his name's sake. And so I guess I couldn't find the video, but I said, well, maybe the Lord says, leave it alone. Because people get so upset when you talk about the Israelites being colored people. And I'm thinking, but you wasn't upset when he was blonde. Okay, and then some people want to talk about, oh, we know he was black because it's, the, it says it's like bronze burnt in the fire. You're getting caught up on the word burnt. When you put bronze in the fire, it glows red. That was a celestial or heavenly body image of Christ, not the terrestrial or earthly body image of Christ. So that's not a good scripture to use. And then we have to, again, understand, like I said, the mixture. So when the Persians came in, when the Greeks came in, did any of those men who they name in Matthew as being his, his ancestors, did any of those men have Persian or Greek wives who converted to Judaism? And so again, when you start talking about the mixture, just because Israelites were traditionally black people, that does not necessarily mean that Christ Jesus looked like how we um, look as African-American people, especially because many of the African-American people did not leave in 70 AD as is being taught. But we left, I know specifically my ancestors left during the time of Jeremiah and went into Egypt and Ethiopia down into down further south into East Africa, across the Congo River, through Central Africa, into Nigeria, Benin, and then um, Ghana, where we were tricked and was in Jamestown. This is all revelation. That I've also had to study and find the, the true history of these people that they tell after the Lord showed it to me in the Bible. And after the Lord revealed things to me according to my prayers and showing me things in the Bible to say, okay, open this, read this. Okay, hallelujah. And then I could confirm and compare to other things he had put into my spirit and give me revelation. And then I could find my tribes of people in Africa and say, oh, wow, the history that they tell about themselves, which spiritually they have handed down from fathers to son. It's something that the Lord had already given to me as a generational blessing, the blessing of wisdom, the blessing of reversing the curse. It was prophesied to me that there are some generational blessings coming to me that have already skipped generations. And so I knew when that was prophesied, and most people want to think about money, but I knew, okay, no, it's going to be something spiritual. And so that was a spiritual blessing God gave to me. That had already skipped generations, the blessing of knowing who I am and where I come from. And I have been teaching all who is willing to listen, including those in my family, if, again, they are willing to listen. And so, uh, and, 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 and then to even find out that the, the they homey people, one of the curses they put on us was sexual immorality, poverty, and not knowing who you are. And so God is, has already been again to break these curses and break these curses and break these curses. And they shall continue to be broken and destroyed forever in Jesus' name. And so a lot of us left way before 70 A.D., Okay, but by 70 AD, we know that the Romans were there. And so you're talking about the Romans, the Greeks, the Persians, all having their, their turn taking over Israel. So you're talking again about mixture. So even though, yes, black people are Jews, it does not necessarily mean that Jesus Christ would appear and look like an African-American person. Okay, because the, the burnt black bronze in the fire is a glowing red celestial manifestation of Christ Jesus, not an earthly one. Okay, so again, it's back to the mixture and back to the mixture. And so this is the problem. And this is why God is going to just burn the whole thing down. Because there's just too much mixture now going into the whole situation with transhumanism and all of the different creatures. And I don't even have time. I suggest you go to Celestial of the Master's Voice because she has direct words from Lord God Almighty whom I can confirm. Some things I have, he's had to correct. Some things he has confirmed. Some things. And so you should go and watch that. You know, I used to think that the angels came back because they said there was giants in the land in those days and after. And you hear about the Rephaim and the Anakim. And again, that's Deuteronomy. I believe it's the ninth and 10th chapter. Or the ninth chapter specifically. 
um, the beginning of like chapter 9 of the book of Deuteronomy, verses 1 through 3, somewhere like that, where it talks about the Anakim, and so you're talking about giants. And so I just think that, okay, they came, more fallen angels came because only a certain amount went to Mount Harmon. Not all of them went to Mount Harmon and took wives, and so the rest who was up in the planets must have came down later. Well, that's what I used to believe, but again, like I said, some things God has to correct me, because it's not that they more came, it's just that somehow they survived the flood. The ones that are marine kingdom spirits, of course we know they survived the flood, but then the giants, I'm not so sure. Celestial thinks maybe they hung on a mountain. I think only if they could have maybe been in a cave high on the mountain because there's so much that God did not tell us in the Bible because the focus is Jesus Christ and it says that even what he did there's not enough books in the world to talk about it and so I don't know how they survived but I believe they survived and then the ones in the water of course they survived the giants somehow survived and then they're interdimensional so they probably went into one dimension and came back into another dimension because they are really here in another dimension not necessarily on the planet because the sky is glass thank you again prophetess for that revelation but I still even though the sky is glass I still say that that perhaps not everything NASA says is a lie because there probably are planets because there are windows in heaven. So maybe God allowed them to come through the windows because just even as prophet has said, it's our punishment for our sins and all the mixture and all the mess that we have going on. So you see it when it comes to just human and what is human and what's half human and part human and part animal and part this and part that. And then you see it in our doctrine. You see it in our religion. You see it in all over all over and so this is it has become confusion it has become confusion because even as i said and then all the religions are tied together because even again the jews influenced muhammad who just wanted to compete with the christians and compete with the jew with the, with the christians who were following christ jesus who was a jew and so judaism had become a whole new thing from judaism to christianity and it was spreading worldwide and so then there's competition and there's hatred and sibling rivalry and all of these things which cause just an absolute mess, and it's disgusting. But Jesus is on his way to fix it all. God bless you. Good Bible, do what it says. He will be here very soon. He will be here very soon. So again, get you a Bible and read it and do what it says because Jesus Christ is on his way. God bless you.